Hey, this will be a quick tutorial on how to create dynamic walls in Unity 3D. I have set up a little test scene right here with just a ground plane and a camera which is directly looking at that plane. And what I want to do later is to click my left mouse button and click drag to create a wall to maybe somehow uh, lay out the ground plane for the ground plan for a house or something and like I can drag multiple times, I can put together multiple walls and make a house for what game? Uh, I don't know. <coughs> you decide on that. Okay. Uh, I have a main camera uh, and first I want to create a script called create walls and uh, in that script we want to handle uh, the input. So what is input? The input uh, will be handled by the left mouse click. Um, so first of all, we want to uh, get the input in our update function. Um, just setting up that method right here. Get input. Okay, so uh, what do we need for the input? Left click. If I start clicking, I want to start building my wall. So I want to set the first point of the first endpoint, uh, rather the starting point of my wall, and then I move my mouse wherever I want and I release, and that will be my endpoint. So um, if we go input get mouse button down, that will be when we start clicking, zero is the left click, then we want to set the start point, I'll just, um, I'll create the method for that later, else if input.getMouseButton up is when we release the left mouse click, and then we want to set the end point, and in between, uh, we want to adjust our wall, so we have like a live view where our wall will be, so basically we uh, do adjust. Um, one little thing right here, I want to uh, make another if statement around that, if creating, which will be a boolean, which determines whether we're currently creating a wall and therefore have to adjust or not. So let me just set that up, bool, I guess, yeah, bool creating, and so in our Set start. The first thing we need to do is say, okay, now we're creating, so I'm setting that to true. And equally in set end, uh, we set it to false accordingly. Okay, and I also want my method adjust sometime. Okay, what else do we need to do in the start method? Um, the way we're going to um, do our walls, we're going to have some start and end pole that I will create now. So I have a cube, call that start pole, for example, and let me just find that, uh, zero it out, and I don't know, make it smaller here, and about three, I don't know, five, that's fine. Okay, uh, and we're going to have an end pole as well. And I will want to be able to use these in my script. So I go fabric game object start. I'll just call it start and end for simplicity. Game object end. Okay. Um, these will show up here, and I can go and uh, connect my start and end pole. Okay, now I have these objects. Um, let's move these two out of the way, a thousand, so we don't see them in the beginning. And if I press start, I want to move my start pole to my position I just clicked. So to determine the position I just clicked, uh, we will need to have some function uh, get world point. And it's not void, but it's vector three because I'm actually returning position from that. So this right here is like the uh, return parameter. 
um, and it's not void, it's not nothing, it's something, it's the world point that I click with my mouse, so I, uh, in the game, I click with my mouse somewhere, and it will return me um, the world position of where I hit from my screen point. Um, I'm going to use a ray cast for this, because I think it's the best and most precise way. So we go ray, and we're going to use, uh, just note that this script is attached to our main camera, so we can directly uh, uh, address the camera component by just typing camera dot, and now we're using um, the the method, uh, screen point to ray, and I'm going to feed it my mouse position. So what we have here is a ray that shoots out from wherever we uh, have our current mouse. And this method will later be triggered in set start, which is triggered when we press left. So it's correct. Okay. Um, and I will also want to remember where my raycast hits. So now I simply do if physics dot raycast, I shoot my ray and I say wherever it hits should be saved in my hit variable, that's why we do out hit, and then we're just going to return hit dot point, which is the the point where it hit, and um, if we leave it like this, I think it's going to complain, not all code paths return a value, um, but we will always being that if, but our code of course doesn't know it, so I'll just return vector 3.0 here, which will apparently never happen, but then Unity is happy because all code paths do return a value, that error just disappeared. Okay, so that's our get world point, which is really crucial to what we're doing here, because we click somewhere and we become the point to uh, from which and to which our wall is going to be created. Okay. Um, I'm going to call that method in my uh, set start. So, um, I'm going to move my start pole there, so its position is there. Start transform dot position equals get world point. Okay, we can actually check that out right now. If I press left click, my start pole appears wherever I click. Of course, now I want to hold my left mouse button and drag and then like, create the wall, but at least that part works for now. Um, okay, creating true, we've done that. And now we need to um, maybe set end, set our end pole. Um, so I'm basically doing almost the same. Uh, in the end, I want to set my end pole position to get world point. So let's try this again. Start and end. Okay, that's good already. And of course, I want to adjust my position all the time when I'm dragging so I can see my end pole. Okay, so I will just copy and paste it to my adjust function and now I can set my start and something weird happens. Ooh, okay. Why is that? I think it's really not what we want to have. But this is actually because uh, I keep clicking and my mouse is like on the pole and that's why uh, it finds a position on the pole again and again and again. That's why it actually comes closer. So to fix that, we uh, select our start and end pole and set its layer to ignore raycast. And now our raycast that we do to determine the world position is just going just gonna to go through these poles and um, always find the world point. Okay, so what I have now, I click, I hold, and I can like uh, adjust my end pole right here. I can leave it, and I can do the same thing again and again. Okay. But right now we don't have a wall created in between them. So to create that wall, um, uh, let's 
create a variable game object role and um I don't have a ball yet, do I? Okay, let's go here and create a cube and let's have it the same um same um width and height as oh, I just reset it, didn't I? Um uh, same size as our poles. Um and later we're gonna like make it longer by script uh, according to the distance of our start pole and end pole. Okay, uh, and this is gonna be our wall, and I'm gonna save that as a prefab. Okay, and should I okay I have a game object wall which will be my current wall, and I also need a public game object wall prefab to be able to instantiate a new wall from script. Okay, this will appear here and I assign my wall prefab to it. Okay, so if we start dragging a new wall, we want to create a new wall. So I'm just going to set my current wall to instantiate a wall prefab at uh, basically well, we could use start uh, transform position. That would be quite okay. Actually, it doesn't matter because we're going to adjust it. But that's maybe quite good. Quaternion dot identity is for no rotation, and as game object, we need to do that cast. We could equally do a game object in front. That's maybe how you know cast. So I'm just going to do it this way today. But really, both is possible. S game object works uh, the same way. Okay, so now we instantiate a wall, and in the adjust method, we will have to adjust that wall's size as well as the wall's rotation. Um, so let's just uh, call a function adjust wall. So we have it nice and distributed. Uh, void adjust wall. And now, um, the first thing we want to do is to make the poles actually face each other. Okay, I have some error. Adjust wall typo. Maybe. Okay, the first thing we want to do is make these poles face each other, so they kind of look at each other. So we have uh, can then use the poles rotation for the walls rotation. Okay, so let's say adjust wall and make um, the both of the poles um, face each other. So I said it before, uh, look at each other, and you may know that function from other contexts and it's exactly what we're going to use here. It's uh, a method of transform and you can feed it a world position, vector 3, uh, where to look at. So we're just going to go and the start should look at the end position and accordingly the end transform look at the start transform position and if I just try that out you can see um, the poles looking at each other. There's this wall prefab I created, which is a bit ugly right now, and also not set to ignore raycast. Um, so you can't see it at the start pole, but if you look at the end pole, you can see that it's always facing the middle pole, the, the start pole. And also, if I, I'm not done, they keep looking at each other, and later we want to have that wall sitting in between those. Okay. Um, let me just set the wall to ignore raycast as well. Okay, so we have the poles looking at each other, but the wall is not adjusted in size correctly, and also its position is wrong. So, uh, what should the position of the wall be? I think the simplest thing to do that is to position the wall uh, in the middle of the two poles. So, if I drag here, and I have a certain distance, 
between my two poles. The position of my wall should be exactly in between those two poles. So if I have it here, my wall position should be somewhere here. I uh, have the same direction and a size um, uh, a size uh, to, to, to match the, di the distance between the two poles. Okay, adjust wall, that's why I'm going to do that. And wall transform position. Okay, position in between the two walls. Okay, uh, so the first thing I would need before I can do that is the distance between the two poles. So for that, we're just going to use Unity's built-in function vector three distance, and feed it our start transform position and our end transform position. Now we have the distance, and um, to calculate the position in between the two poles, we're going to start from the first pole from the start pole transform position plus distance half because we're just going to work we'll just want to go halfway there um, and we're going to go in the direction of the pole we just rotated it before we look at the end position so our transformed it forward faces the correct direction okay so now if I try that out my wall which is not adjusted in rotation and size yet but the position is like in between the two poles. So that's quite good already. Okay, now just continue and uh, say wall transform dot rotation, which is just the same as uh, one of the poles rotation. So I'm just going to use start here. I could use end as well. And well, just to show you, I mean, you should know what it should look like, but I'm just going to show you anyway. So now it's rotated correctly, and we're just left. With the size adjustment, so we go wall transform dot local scale, that's the size, or we go new vector three, and we just think about what do we want to change. We definitely don't want to change the height because that's already good, um, but we want to uh, adjust the x scale actually. Uh, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. We want to uh, adjust the um, the z, uh, z scale. So this is just going to stay the same. So I'm just going to feed it as x parameter, the x parameter it already has, and same with y. So wall transform local scale y, and for my z um, uh, local scale, I will choose. The distance which I've already calculated up here and then it should match uh, the distance between the two poles perfectly and right here I'm dragging a wall just like we want it and I can connect another wall to it and another wall to it and I have my first little house I unfortunately can't see much but I think you get the idea and I hope you like this tutorial. Subscribe if you want more of these creative tutorials in the future. See you soon. Bye.